Hello, and welcome back to The Broken Past. Today we have a relatively burned out polarizer on this Game Boy Pocket. Um, we can see quite a bit of the darker color in the middle. There's also a little bit of a, a bit of a bubble in there. I'm hoping that's just on the polarizer and that's not gonna be an issue with the screen itself. Um, the Game Boy Pocket does work. We can see there, we can see the Nintendo logo, or, you know, I don't have a game in there, but we can see the inverse of the color in the middle due to that, the burn polarizer, um, sort of a common occurrence with these consoles. Overall, besides that, this thing appears to be in pretty good shape uh, overall. There's some, some gunk on the sticker and some, some scuffs here and there, but I think overall it's in pretty good shape. So today we're going to try, there's a little bit of a scuff on there, but I think that might come off with just a little bit of cleaning solution. So um, today we're gonna try to replace that polarizer film on the Game Boy Pocket. Usually it's a pretty easy task, so cross our fingers that today um, this will go pretty well for us as well. So to start with, we'll pull the batteries out of the pocket. And from here, we have six tri-wing screws that we'll need to remove. There's going to be four on each corner. Or sorry, not on the corners, but four on the top corners and then four in the middle. And then we'll have two down here in the bottom. So remove those. And all six of these screws are the same size as well, so we don't need to try to keep track of where they came from. And at that point, the back cover just pops straight off. You can see that overall, it's not too bad. Just a little bit of dust in there. And then we get access to the main board. Um, it looks like the cartridge slot was pretty clean on this guy. There's a little bit of corrosion on that Game Boy uh, original Game Boy we bought. Oh, this seems like it's pretty good. Contacts in the front look fine. So I'm going to start by removing or loosening the locking tabs for the ribbon cable just to get those done and out of the way. And then go ahead and just remove the ribbon cable all together. And here we have three more. Oh, these are Phillips screws. I think some of these might be tri-wing screws on some consoles. Uh, and this one, these three are Phillips screws. And the whole board will just lift right out of there. And since we're going to go ahead and give this a pretty deep clean, I'll go ahead and pull off the button covers. And the buttons as well. And we'll go ahead and pull off the power switch too. So for those of you who watch Elliot with the Retro Future, You'll be familiar with his trick of simply taking the front case and, and twisting it sort of against itself to get the screen loosened up. There's going to be a bit of sticky tape in there to, to hold it in place and that will kind of help to loosen that up. It's going to sound really scary, but it's just the screen uh, slightly disengaging itself from the case. And there we have it. And here we can see the, the sticky that kind of helps to hold it uh, in place. So taking a look, a closer look at this screen, um, definitely the polarizer, as we said, is, is burned, but it does look like there might be some um, screen 
uh, leakage over here on the side. Uh, not a huge deal. Um, this is going to be for display as well. But most of this will be hidden by the framing of the, the shell. There is an interesting bubble in the middle. I'm hoping that when the screen got burned, it just simply, the, the glue kind of just popped off right there. So we will take a look. Um, to get this off, it's not too bad. There's a polarizing film right on the front. And if we, if we can turn it to the side here, you can kind of see it a little bit, but we simply need to get a blade underneath of there and we'll slowly work our way around, being careful not to slice through the ribbon cables. Um, and we should be able to get that off. That'll probably leave a little bit of glue residue we'll have to deal with, but um, overall it should not be too bad. So, take our trusty knife and start um, working that out. And if we're able to start getting part of the corner, then we should, being very careful, not to put a lot of undue stress on the screen itself. We should be able to work our way around and ultimately get the burned polarizer off, which is kind of hard to see on there. But the screen itself appears to be in really good condition um, underneath of all that. So clearly we have a lot of dried caked glue on there that has a pretty strong glue smell. But this should come off pretty well with some basic uh, isopropyl alcohol. I do see that I have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of polarizer that didn't come off. So see if we can get that last little bit off there as well. And piece of cake. Now we'll take our isopropyl alcohol, get a little bit of it on Q-tip and use that to help dissolve the glue on the screen and this this will take some elbow grease to to get rid of um, a little bit to work the glue loose and then wipe it off So after probably an hour and a half or so of scrubbing, um, I finally got all that glue off of there. And I think this screen turned out pretty darn good. So if I take the screen and the polarizer, we can see, let's see if I can show it on the video, that uh, there's no scuffs or anything. The screen turned out pretty much absolutely perfect. So I'm very happy with that. So the polarizer should be, um, should have adhesive on both sides. Make sure again that I know which way I'm oriented here. So, remove the adhesive. I'm going to avoid fingerprints as much as possible. So, let's see where it's going to be aligned at. All right. And yours might not come pre-cut, and if that's the case simply use the old one as a template for installing the new one. And then, before I bother with that front half, I'm gonna go ahead 
and zoom out a little bit here. Temporarily put it all back together and make sure that we don't have any issues because there was a lot a lot of scrubbing on that to get all that glue off so I want to just make sure that I didn't accidentally bump anything in the process and I think I can just sit it In here throw some batteries in and let's find out if everything still works there it goes if we can see that, everything still looks good, and we don't have that that burned ring in there, which we can see by adjusting the contrast. So that is great news. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it back off. And pull the batteries out. And at this point, I think it's actually time to go ahead and clean everything before putting it all back together. So, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and I will cut to the result when that's all done. So it's been about 18 hours now since I got all the parts cleaned up. Uh, they've had overnight to, to dry. Um, I think everything looks like it turned out pretty well. So at this point, we can simply begin the uh, reinstallation process the reassembly process uh, basically just doing everything in reverse um, the first thing I still need to do is get the front part of the the polarizer off of here the front protecting part of it so since the since the polarizer did not come with any adhesive let's see if I can just Sort of position it into place ahead of time and then just drop the screen in place I think that'll work admittedly I'm not sure if there's supposed to be adhesive on that um, but you know it's, that'll work and we'll reinstall our D-pad. As well as our A and B buttons. Our start and select. and the covers as well as the cover for the d-pad and slide our motherboard in place Phillips screws and these are tweezers to help realign the ribbon cable I might be able to do it without the tweezers but we can use them to help fully seat the ribbon cable and then Drop our locking tabs back in place and insert our power switch. And 
and then it's time to button it up. Let's drop some batteries in and let's see how it looks. Got our battery cover. Drop our game in. And from the front, that looks, see while it's reflecting in the video, that turned out really well. Let's turn it on. Some volume here. All right. And then the volume back down. So overall, I think that turned out really well. Um, definitely better than that that really burned um, circle in the middle of it before. So uh, yeah, the case itself still has some issues. There's some scuffs there. Uh, the sticker on the back is missing some of the adhesive and it's kind of falling apart but um, overall it's not not too bad if I take my cloth here and get some of the fingerprints off of the front definitely definitely happy with how that turned out so yeah um, we'll see how out of order this video is I actually recorded this once um, and I was not happy with some of the bubbles in the in the uh, polarizer so i took it apart and cleaned it some more and put it back together and now i think it looks great so hopefully the video in the end video looks looks okay um but either way the the game boy itself looks great and i'm super happy with the result so uh yeah thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next video and i will see you next time thanks a lot and bye, -bye.